Good morning, General Hawks. Thank Good you morning. For, thank you for taking some time to talk about the International Health Specialist Program and, and celebrate our 20 years of having this program as part of the Air Force Medical Service. 20 years. I know I was thinking about that the other day. Wow. Can't believe it's been that long. Yeah, it's been a, been quite a road for the program, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you've got to see it through many different iterations through your career. From the first time that we were even starting to think about international health specialists, and I don't even think we called it that then, but you know, how could we get our medics into the bigger picture of not just delivering clinical care? but really into the military operations and the benefit and the positive things that we would bring to that. It's somewhat of an unnatural leap for a lot of medics to go in outside that clinical role into this more operational role. And from the service, this is a very unique thing to do for the Air Force Medical Service to put medics in this type of role. Yeah, absolutely. Because when you talk to people about what does military medicine bring, the first thing that pops into their head is access into the clinic. But the reason that we are military medics and we wear the uniform is not just that. As a matter of fact, it's not our primary mission. You know, our primary mission is readiness. Our primary mission is to go to war and make sure that we are ensuring the health and safety and bringing our wounded warriors back safely and quickly. And then also to help our partner nations build their capability right. so they don't just rely on our capability. And having those partnerships is just such a key thing. Do you have any memorable interactions that you've experienced personally through the years, these past 20 years of the International Health Specialist Program? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when I became the nursing corps chief in um, 2013, I had the opportunity to engage in what we were doing at the time called the Asian Pacific Military Nursing Exchange. So I did that two years in a row. My first year we were in Hawaii, and so we had engagements from our different Asian partners, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, even China, all came together in Hawaii for us to exchange military nursing lessons learned and how we did business there. And that was my first opportunity to really showcase our enlisted medics. So Chief Steiner was my counterpart. And we dialogued together in the presentation that we gave to the audience. And I, and I think that was a really a good thing. A lot of our foreign partners don't have enlisted medics. But to see the relationship between myself and my enlisted chief really helped them to kind of open their eyes about, you know, hey, maybe we could do something a little different here. The second year we went to Korea. Amazing. That was an amazing opportunity. And the interactions that we had with them also learned a lot from both of us on both sides. And I think that's really what we sometimes miss or don't recognize is a lot of times we're going through the same challenges. And so to be able to share the challenges that we're having and some of the solutions that we've tried to put in play to meet those challenges can be shared. The third time is I went to Europe. I went to Garmisch, <laughs> another hard duty station. And uh, we had our European African Nursing Exchange. Right. Same thing there. We had a lot of good dialogue and interaction on what other countries were doing to take care of their military force and we just shared a lot of good lessons learned. Hearing you talk about these different experiences with the nursing exchanges reminds me of when I was working at some of the MAGCOMs and the COCOMs how the senior enlisted who were in charge of enlisted professional development mm -hmm. they would look to us and they would come and they would talk about these nursing exchanges and the professional development. So sharing a lot of that, I think, just brings value and, and benefit. In your role now as the Air Force Surgeon General, how do you view the International Health Specialist Program providing a benefit to the Air Force Medical Service? I think there's three benefits. Uh, one is, in medical, we can get isolated behind our four walls of the military treatment facilities. Medicine is 
just not providing clinical care. It's not just seeing a patient. It's bigger than that. And these international health specialists going out into other countries and working side by side, not only with other countries, but even our joint partners, Navy, Army, opens up their eyes to really the whole benefit that military medicine brings to the entire DOD mission. Mm -hmm. And so it helps them see how military medicine really has an impact into the mission at large, not just the medical mission. The other thing is it helps them build their skills with their own deployment taskings. So critical care nurses on the CCAT team, ground surgical docs or nurses, they go out and teach that capability to other nations so that they have it. So it makes them a master of their trade. And then the third thing is with the NDS and one of their priorities being building partnerships. Right. This is one way that we do this. This is one way that the medical community can build those partnerships. We're not there just to teach people how to load a patient on a plane or a helicopter. We're really building that relationship to help deter conflict, or if conflict does happen, it's more than just us, right? So I think that's one of the biggest values that our international health specialists bring. It also opens up the eyes of our line leaders of what Air Force medicine does. And again, it's not just access. It's more than that. It's about the skills that we bring to enable their mission to be more successful. As far as readiness, we talk about individual skills and unit type skills, but from a systems level, one of the important things within the national defense strategy is interoperability with our partners. From your perspective, man, some of your thoughts on how we can work with our international partners. When you bring in international health specialists who really have an understanding of how military medicine works, they can bring that to the strategic planning levels. Uh, we worked with our Australian partners for a long time on being able to medically air evac patients on their plane and our plane using each other's equipment. I can take my air medical evacuation equipment onto an Australian plane and still be okay to transport patients and they can do the same for us. So that just increases capacity mm -hmm. and capability. If ever we need to get into that domain. I was able to go to Mobility Guardian, the largest AMC exercise and international. A lot of foreign partners, Australia, Singapore, Thailand, and for our medics there and our air medical evacuation medics, they were side by side training and learning mm -hmm. on how to do air medical evacuation. And in this particular exercise, we actually used a C5, mm -hmm. which we have never done before for air transport. Mm -hmm. Given what we think we might be faced with in the future, we're looking at all of our platforms to figure out what would be a good platform to use for air medical evacuation. So they did an exercise on loading this C5 with patients. And there were Singaporeans and Australians and US side by side, loading patients, caring for patients during this whole exercise. And it was quite fabulous to see. It sounds like a great opportunity for peers or near peers to really work together and through some of the differences in the systems and to overcome those differences. Absolutely. The value that the international health specialists bring to not only the Air Force but to our COCOMs is being able to provide improve partnership capacity and capability so that we can maybe iron out our differences before we get to conflict. And so I think that's one way that it brings value to the Air Force and to DOD at large. With the Secretary of Defense's strategy of attracting new partners, mm -hmm. solidifying our new partnership, and then working towards building interoperability. We have our international health specialists working to help achieve some of those aspects of the national defense strategy that have been laid out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we have good working relationships with our, our common partners right now, but there's others we'd like to engage with. So, for example, 
Laos. We've been in there in the country for quite some time, very pragmatic relationship. So POW, MIA, bringing our Americans home. But we were able to get some of our medics in there, our international health specialists, to do some training that opened the door up for us to be able to do a bilateral, higher level engagement with them, which uh, our medics cracked that ice, <laughs> I like to say. They cracked that ice to allow um, a more bilateral engagement, mm -hmm. mill to mill, to go on. And getting in there, I think, helped with then the Department of State and the COCOM's goal of working to achieve a defense attaché. Right, absolutely, absolutely. General Hogg, how, how do you think the International Health Specialist Program can continue to mature? So right now, I'm planning my medic of 2030. What do my medics need to have? What skills do they need to have to be able to be successful and operate in 2030? Because you gotta start building that now. And so I think that the skills that the International Health Specialists bring gives a more rounded capability to our medics. So is there a baseline training that we should be giving to all medics, like BLS, right? So all of our medics probably ought to have some kind of intro to international relations because we often go to other countries to deliver our capability. So in that medic of 2030, not only do I need to have every medic, not just clinical medics, but every medic know how to take care of a patient to some level, I believe that I also need to have every medic know how to do international health engagements, even at a basic level. Because when they're side by side with a partner, that's international health engagement. So giving them the skills to be able to do that and do that well, I think is a positive thing. Absolutely, because every medic and every airman, as one of our former chiefs of staff said, should be able to be an international right. airman. Right, absolutely. Well, thank you very much, ma'am. I appreciate the time that you've spent uh, sharing your thoughts about the International Health Specialist Program over these past 20 years. It's been a real honor to have this time and to talk with you. Yeah, thank you, Colonel Palmer. I, I just have to thank you, too, really, truly, for your dedication and for your continued challenge to keep it moving forward. So thank you very much. Oh, it's been an honor to serve, ma'am.